Hello, friends. This is Evangelist Scott Pauley. I'm so happy that you are joining our broadcast today. Several years ago, when we first began the Enjoying the Journey broadcast, we started with my favorite book of the Bible. I've adopted it really as my life's study on the book of Philippians. And the theme, of course, of that great book is the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, truly, it is the, the Bible treatise on what it means to enjoy the journey. Now we're thrilled to share this anniversary series with you again in the hopes that God will use it in your life to help you learn to enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ at whatever stage you happen to be on on life's journey. I trust that these studies from the Word of God today will refresh your spirit and renew your strength for the days ahead. God bless you as you listen. In Philippians chapter 1, we are looking at Paul's prayer list. Wouldn't you love to just peek over the shoulder of the great apostle? Do you see him there on his knees with a list in front of him of people he's praying for, believers in Philippi? And listen to him pray. Paul, what are you praying for? Philippians 1 verse 9, he says, In this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. We learned last time that he begins his prayer, first of all, with this prayer request for inward growth, that they would have a deeper understanding of the love of God and that that love would be expressed in and through their life. You know, it's interesting, but the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22, begins with love and then joy. Notice the connection between love and joy. If you want to enjoy life, if you want to enjoy the journey, then learn the secret of letting the love of God be real in you and through you. And the Bible says, he prays that it would abound yet more and more. You see, this is not just something for the initial stages of our Christian life. This is something that's supposed to grow in us. This is something we're supposed to grow in. The Christian life is never less and less. It's always more and more. The devil gives you his best up front, and it's all downhill from there. But with the Lord, it is to increase. It's an abounding life, an upward life. The Scripture says that the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And so I hope you're praying that the love of God will grow in you and through you. That it'll come out in your words and your actions and your attitudes and your responses to others. And lest you think that this love is just mere emotion. And lest you think that this love is just some warm, fuzzy feeling uh, that just makes you feel good. He says this, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. This love is discerning. The love of God is a discerning love. It loves pure things and right things and holy things. And so he begins his prayer for inward growth. And then he continues in the next verse, in verse 10, that, here's the second thing, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now, if the first prayer request was for inward growth, that I would know God's love and discernment more in my inner man, the second prayer request is a prayer for outward growth. Notice how he turns it inside out, that now what is on the inside, what is happening in my heart, is going to affect every part of my life. Listen to the verse again, that ye may approve things that are excellent. In other words, that I would choose the very best, God's best. My pastor, Dr. Clarence Sexton, used to say frequently in my hearing that taking the high road in life is not choosing between the good and the bad. Anyone can do that. Taking the high road in life is choosing between the good and the best and always choosing the best. A friend, if you're going to enjoy the journey, you're going to have to take the high road. And if you're going to take the high road, then you're going to have to learn to choose the best, to approve things that are excellent, things that excel. Oh, how many times in life we settle. Don't we settle? We settle for less than God's best, just enough to get by. That's not the joyful, abounding Christian life. No, we're to choose God's best. And then he says this, "...that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ." Notice that he begins with what God sees first, things that are excellent, and then what others see without offense. In other words, in every relationship, 
how others observe my life and my testimony. I want it to point them to Jesus Christ. This is outward growth. It's holiness. That's a word you don't hear much today. It's holiness in a wicked world. You know, Philippi was a fairly wicked place. As a matter of fact, some writers even refer to it as a little Rome. Imagine the immorality and the wickedness that was rampant in that place. And the Apostle Paul says, I want God to so work in you that He can work through you. I want the Lord to work so deeply in your inner man that then it comes out. In another place, he said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Friends, as God works in, you work out. And so he's praying for outward growth. There's a word here in verse 10 that's captured my attention. It's the word sincere. Sincere. What does that mean? F.B. Meyer said, it's like the light of an x-ray machine. It's the word from which we get sunlight. In other words, when God turns his spotlight on you, does anything show up? Is it excellent? Does it honor the Lord? Does it point people to Jesus Christ? You know, in the Apostle Paul's day, if you went to a marketplace, frequently uh, people would cheat. They would take a vessel, a piece of pottery that had a crack in it, and they would put melted wax in it. They would sand it down really smooth. They would paint it beautifully. And then they would set it out and they would sell it like it was a whole vessel, like it was sincere. Well, you know what happens. Someone comes along, purchases that piece of pottery, takes it home, puts it open, over an open fire to cook, and the moment the fire hits that wax, it melts and the vessel begins to leak. It's an illustration of something that is not sincere. It's not whole. It's not complete. And friend, when the fire of tribulation and trial comes, it's going to reveal that. My prayer for you today, my prayer for my own life, and your prayer for yourself and others should be this, Lord, make us sincere. Make us whole, complete people. Make us people that in every relationship and in every decision and every part of our life point people to the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense. How long? Till the day of Christ. I want to be right with God today and I want to stay right with God every day until the day I see Jesus Christ face to face. This is Paul's prayer request and I hope you'll make it your own today. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We are grateful you've joined us for this study today. If you love the book of Philippians, be sure to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org and download the audiobook of Philippians. Scott also has a full sermon series through Philippians that we believe will be an encouragement to you as well. And until next time, may the joy of Jesus help you enjoy the journey.